Christmas is just a few days away, guys, and what better way to talk about uh, Christmas stuff than Christmas movies? As I sit down with Jimmy Jurek? Jurek. Jurek. Jurek, yeah. Jurek? Jurek. <laughs> or Jurek. Jurek? Yeah. Okay. You know, I honestly don't know. I don't really know which one it's supposed to be. Jurek or Jurek. <laughs> you don't I really? Say, I say Jurek. There are only three GRACs in my family, so okay. <laughs> we all say GRAC. We don't really know. <laughs> so anyway, I'm sitting down with Jamie Jurek to That's right. to, to <laughs> talk about Christmas movies. Let's break it. I think you should keep it like that. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to talk about Christmas movies. Cue the music. Welcome, everyone, to the Entertainment Buffet Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Prosek. As I said in the intro, as I couldn't uh, say her name, sitting down with Jamie Jurek today as we... <laughs> she, we're going to laugh because is that wrong? Is that right? No, it's right. It's close enough? Okay. Um, to talk all about Christmas movies for episode 22, which I hope everyone is having a lovely holiday season and uh, they get all the presents they're hoping for. Or at least, you know, maybe a bonus to pay some of their student debt like I'm hoping for. <sighs> <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, before we get started in the conversation, I'll get all the plugs out of the way. Please uh, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes uh, so we'll get the, the word out to some more listeners about the podcast. We also have an additional podcast on this feed called Film Tweakers. We do about once a month, kind of coinciding with this, where I sit down with someone and kind of break down the top five tweaks on how we can fix a film. The next few uh, weeks I'm going to be releasing, uh, Josh Sibley and I are going to be tweaking the Star Wars prequel trilogy, one film at a time. So be on the lookout for that as well. We also uh, can be found on Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, Blueberry, all those for all you Apple haters who aren't on iTunes. Um, Please uh, also check out some fellow podcasts, Movie Trailer Trash, Brothers Marvel, Slobber Knockers podcast. They're all podcasts from friends of mine and various topics uh, you should check out as well. And also, Entertainment Buffet, we have not one but two Christmas-themed sketches coming out in the next uh, week or so, so please check those out. We are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or just find us at entertainmentbuffet.com. Christmas-themed sketches, and coming into 2017, we have like about a dozen sketches and web show episodes in the editing process if the editors stop ghosting me and (laughs) can hopefully start releasing those soon but uh yeah as i said before i'm sitting down with jamie (laughs) jurek i'm not gonna be able to that's jurek jurek yeah like jurek jurek yeah jurek jurek that's you got it okay i got it (laughs) i'm really bad at last names i've never seen before either yeah so no worries yeah uh uh, I'm, my last name is Prozac. People think it's Prozac all the time. Um, I think that's how I've been saying it in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is, I realized, I was like, when you don't say someone's name out loud a lot, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, I've said it in my head this way for a while. <laughs> but anyway, I figured it out. Um, but yeah, Jamie, uh, tell, the, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Jamie Girac, and uh, <laughs> I am a writer and a performer. I perform at the PH Comedy Theater in Andersonville. Um, I binge watch a lot of TV. I don't have a job right now, so that's pretty much all I'm doing. (laughs) Really exciting stuff. Um, And I really love Christmas movies, so I'm excited to talk about them. Yeah, and you also uh, just uh, both produced, or you wrote and acted in a holiday play. Yes, I did. It's Uh, still going on. Still going on. Um, I uh, actually just saw it uh, at the time we are recording uh, a few days ago, and it is hilarious, guys. If you like just kind of goofy, dark humor, it's kind of farcical. And um, Jamie's also starring in it, and she kind of does a little bit of a, a Holtzman from uh, Ghostbusters. A little channeling there. Truly the nicest comparison anyone's ever made <laughs> in my whole life, so I'll take it. Like, I was thinking to myself, like, there was a couple lines, like, you weren't copying her, but you were just kind of like, I could see the, uh, like, where you were maybe dialing to sometimes, mm-hmm. and I was just like, 
does she know she's doing that? I mean, did she like Ghostbusters? Because some people didn't, but that's it is pretty funny that that was something that was an inspiration for you. For the record, I did love the new Ghostbusters, <laughs> but I also didn't grow up watching the original. Okay. Had I, I might have had a different opinion. Very but. true. So yeah, it's called Die Another Holiday. Please, if you live in the Chicago or Andersonville area, please go check it out. Uh, where can they get tickets and information on it? Oh, if you go to whatisph.com, that'll also give you info on all the other shows that we do at the theater. Awesome. And is that running until, like, I think you said end of January? Yeah, January 21st is the last show. So it's every Saturday at 930, but there's no show on Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys uh, still have about, like, a month or so left to check that out as well. As I said, it was very worth the uh, the $15 that uh, I spent on the ticket, and it was a fun evening. Uh before we get started here, we'll get into the LOL of the week. So, my LOL of the week is a recent sketch video I saw. I'm not sure of the exact name of the group that did it, um, but they did. It's a job interview for, where Jesus is kind of trying to interview a guy for Santa Claus. <laughs> And it's just kind of like, they do like the dark turn where he's just like, great, great news. You only have to work once a year. He's like, oh, well, that sounds great. He's like, yeah, you get your own place. It's kind of like by itself, you know. Um, he's like, but you have to deliver toys to every kid. And they're just kind of like, wait, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, just like every kid in the world. He's like, every fucking kid, you know. And they're like, no, we'll give you, like, helpers. <laughs> he's like, this is not going to be a sweatshop, you know. <laughs> and it just, I love how, like, they pretty much just flipped on its head. Like, you know, it's like, oh, cute, Santa, Christmas, the elves, and this. And they're just putting this negative spin <laughs> on it. And, like, I love it even goes to just, like, uh, well, like, how am I going to get in? They're like, well, you just go down the chimney. He's like, that's not fucking creepy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, well, I'm going to get, like, you know, tired. They're like, well, I'll have them leave milk out for you. <laughs> he's like, that's, like, hydrating. And it's, uh, it's, um, I'm sure it's, you may see it scrolled around on Facebook. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's, it's this hilarious, like, four-minute video that they just nailed. I think they're based in, like, Australia. Oh. But they, um, they just nailed, like, every kind of trope and shtick with Christmas and Santa and all that and like Jesus just being the the job interviewer. It was just so funny. Um, So that's my LOL of the week. Uh, Jamie, do you have yourself in? I'm trying to think of like a specific Christmas LOL. Oh, it it doesn't Um, have to be Christmas, but but yeah. um, Do you have maybe a funny family Christmas story? Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, this is just sad. I haven't been home for Christmas in seven years. Oh, wow. <laughs> My, uh, I just hang out at home on Christmas. No. Um, it's understandable. So, yeah. I mean, especially if you, like, you know, you have a smaller family. Yeah, so it's like, it's never, um, but I, I recently rewatched, it's an old one, but, um, uh, the episode of The Office, the Christmas party episode. Classic. Um, that's definitely a big LOL, LOL <laughs> one for Um, me. is it the... Is it, uh, because I, I think they There's do a couple. Two. Is it season the one, two and season three. Okay, is it the one where they do the, uh, the white elephant? Uh, yeah. Where they, and they exchange, two, yeah. and they have a dollar limit, and then Michael totally buys, like, an iPod. Yeah. <laughs> like, the, which, that kind of dates that, an iPod. <laughs> and then, uh, and, uh, Phyllis makes some oven mitts, and, and he's like, so what you're basically saying is you love me a homemade oven mitts worth. <laughs> Really good, and yeah. and like the the most fam- one of the most famous lines in the office, which is uh, "Happy birthday, Jesus! Sorry, your party's so lame." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like I said, we're here to talk about Christmas movies, so uh, I think one that I, I kind of have to start with, and these are in no order. We're gonna say best, or we're not ranking them. We're just talking about some of the best Christmas movies, and maybe some that are or aren't, and maybe some recent ones, and how it feels like there's a lot more classics than there are stuff that's come out in the last ten years or so. But the the be-all, end-all, A Christmas Story. Which I hate. Really? I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh-huh. Okay, but, we gotta get into this. Yeah, I think so. This is gonna be the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, first tell me why you love it. Okay. I... I love it because it's just so <laughs> ridiculously over the top at times. Mm-hmm. Like it, like if I feel like it's a type of movie. If it came out in a different year, and like different circumstances, it wouldn't be as loved as it is. It, it just kind of like it's this weird movie that like, like if you just take it for the story and the characters and the actors and everything, like. It shouldn't really work. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of just very odd. Like, uh, like for me, one thing I love is 
the adult voiceover for Ralphie is so over the top how he's describing everything, but then you're seeing him as a little kid do the things. Like, it just, I don't know why. I think maybe it's just because it's always on during Christmas yeah. and I love watching it. And, you know, there's just classic line you shoot your eye out, kid. And uh, Fragile must be Italian, you know? <laughs> like, it's just so ridiculous. And now, now I'm starting to see the people have like the lamp legs oh, yeah. everywhere. And, uh, you know, the, the pink bunny suit. The daydream sequences, like, it's just so weird. But I guess that's why I love it, is just, they weren't afraid to go weird with it. Like, I respect that it's a classic, and I think it deserves to be on the classic list. I just never liked it. And I think it's because, as a kid, we, like, they always played it at school. Uh-huh. And, and it, was, it was kind of felt like a chore, like it, an it, assignment. It got old. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's just very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> And I, you know, you know, like your Christmas movies to be kind of happy, and it's it's a downer and it's dark and everyone's mean. <laughs> maybe that's why I like <laughs> it. I like things like that often, but but not a Christmas movie about a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe that, like I said, maybe that's why I like it is because it's so different. For like it's like so many Christmas movies, and we can kind of get into this with other movies, are kind of cheesy at times because it's just like, oh, happy this. And then this one, like, a kid gets his tongue stuck on the <laughs> pole and the fire department has to come. It's just so... Uh, I don't know. I, uh, part of it may be, you know, I think it's TBS that they always do, like, 24 hours of a Christmas oh, story. It's so annoying. There are other movies you can watch. I know, but <laughs> maybe it's because we always watch it at least once that it's just kind of sunk into my brain, but... But it's very interesting. You're one of the first few people I've met that really just aren't a huge fan. Yeah, I think it's it's and again I I, I totally respect the the fan base and the and the world of a Christmas story. <laughs> and you know, as far as like negative kind of Christmas characters, I like National Lampoon Christmas Vacation and that's all, like Chevy Chase is like the worst character of all time. He's like the worst. Yeah, so we can get into that one then. That's another yeah, a good segue. <laughs> that wasn't planned at all. <laughs> no, um, it's way down your list. <laughs> yeah, though that uh, that's a movie that it's funny. I actually personally I saw it when I was younger, but kind of like didn't forget about it. But like you said, they're always showing Christmas Story or Santa Claus or you know How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I kind of forgot about it, mm-hmm. and then like we actually this past Christmas when uh, there was a bunch for like three dollars at the store. Like I bought Christmas Story, I bought Christmas Vacation, and I just like sat down and actually watched it from start to finish. Because there's so many times in the you flip it on the TV and you're like, oh, it's already in the middle. I'll just watch to the end. But like I wanted to sit down and watch the whole thing. And yeah, like it is. He's a terrible. person person. <laughs> He's so awful. Maybe it's like a little weirder now because like I hear all these stories about how Chevy Chase is like kind of a... That makes it worse. That <laughs> it totally makes it worse. Because you're like, is he playing himself then? <laughs> I feel like he kind of is. Yeah, but like it has the infamous swearing scene, mm-hmm. so it's kind of... I think that's one thing uh, I really enjoy about it and just uh, Randy Quaid being... <laughs> Randy Quaid is being Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. So, uh, is that one that it hits hits more home than Christmas well, Story? I actually didn't see that one until I was an adult. Mm-hmm. So, had I seen that one as a kid, it might have been a different situation. But as an adult, I could appreciate the humor. Mm-hmm. I actually, of, of my friend, just told me the story that he was visiting his his mother a few years ago, and um, accidentally ate a bunch of pot cookies. He didn't know that that's <laughs> that. That that's what they were in them, and he doesn't smoke. He's not a smoker, and so he got very high. <laughs> and and um, Christmas Vacation was on, and he said that it ruined the movie for him because he he spent the whole movie realizing that Clark is the villain and the, <laughs> and just and, and just unbearable, and he didn't realize how awful he was. And he said he's never been able to watch the movie since. <laughs> Interesting. So, uh, do you have a? I guess we should uh, move into... Do you have a favorite Christmas movie that's, like, tops all of them? It, that's a tough question, because <laughs> we're going to... I know we're going to get into the Die Hard discussion. Yes. And if we consider that a Christmas movie, it is my fourth favorite movie of all time. So... Nice. But I, but I wouldn't consider it a favorite Christmas movie. Okay. So when we get to that discussion... So, well, yeah, we'll table that Yeah, we'll discussion. table that. <laughs> um, I, I really like romantic Christmas. Christmas comedies like Love Actually and the Family I was Family gonna say, Stone. is it Love Actually? Yeah, My wife loves that and the movie. holiday. Like I'm totally a sucker for those, but it because like I like rom coms, but they're just better when Christmas is involved. But a new favorite is The Ref. 
The ref. The ref. Yes, actually, the DVD's right here. Um, it's, <laughs> she has it out uh, ready. Yeah, uh, my roommate and I. Um, it's my roommate's favorite, and we we made a pact that we couldn't watch any Christmas movies until we decorated. So we decorated the other night, and that was the kickoff. And it's actually on Netflix, uh, so I highly recommend it. It's um, uh, Kevin Spacey and um, Dennis Judy Leary. Davis, and yeah, they're a fighting couple, and they get like wrapped up with Dennis Leary, who's like a robber, and it's it actually feels like a play. It's weird. It's I've, I've, I've never heard of this movie. Oh, it's it's very funny, mm-hmm. and it's on Netflix, so you can watch it. Interesting. Yeah, I will. Uh, I will definitely have to check that out. I mean, is it? Does it take place on like the night of Christmas or like? It's Christmas Eve, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I guess that's what the night of Christmas would be. I'd phrase that off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's got a great cast. Christine Baranski's in it, who I love. Um, also in it, she's in another movie on your list. Unless yeah. you, you have the Grinch Stole Christmas, are you talking about the cartoon or the Jim Carrey film? I'm talking about the Jim Carrey one. Okay. <laughs> How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah, I uh, actually just, at the time we're recording this, just watched this like yesterday or the day before because it's it's been a while. We bought it. It was one of the movies we got for like $3 last year with Christmas Story and Christmas Vacation. I don't know about you, but Jim Carrey was, Jim Carrey and Robin Williams were like my two top favorites growing up. Mm-hmm. And like, um, when I heard that he was going to be Grinch, I, it was like very weird thinking about because you know we just grew up on the cartoon. To I was like, how are they going to make this a feature? And it kind of turned into like a Grinch origin story. <laughs> like that's what it would be now. Like yeah. it's like what did uh, how did Grinch lead up? It's like the last half hour is like the cartoon. But the other hour is all just, you know, oh, he was a who and he kind of was made fun of. And then, like, it, he has, like, this, like, lot of strength. Like, it's just very weird. But, like, I love Jim Carrey. He's just so over the top in that movie. And a lot of people kind of... I saw some of the reviews. They're like, oh, it's kind of, you know, Jim Carrey's doing the best he can, but <laughs> the script isn't helping him. It was never my favorite. I haven't seen it in many, many years. No. Um, I never disliked it. Um, but Jim Carrey, I always have liked Jim Carrey, but I, I'm one of the people that, like, prefer his more serious roles. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. He, Eternal Sunshine, oof. Yeah. Like, he kills it in both drama and comedy. It's, like you said, it's by no means, like, a great movie. It's just... Well, it's a Christmas movie, and you're seeing Jim Carrey in, like, this classic cartoon, Dr. Seuss. And uh, I'm kind of glad that they didn't do too many Dr. Seuss movies after that, because I heard Cat in the Hat was awful. Yeah, I did not see that, but I but I heard it was I pretty imagine. bad. <laughs> At least, like, Grinch, it was like, oh, it's Jim Carrey's not too bad. But, like, Mac Myers in the cat suit, it kind of looked... Creepy. Y- yes. Before we started recording the podcast, you mentioned you've seen Jingle All the Way. Oh, yeah, I own that one. Yeah. I'm a big Arnold fan. <laughs> big Arnold fan. So some people haven't seen it, so because you're someone else who's seen it, like, I, we have to talk about this yes. one. I, I used to watch this on V VHS all the mm-hmm. time. It is so ridiculous. Um, Sinbad. <laughs> his at his best. I yeah, think. <laughs> really. Like I think that's one of his better I mean, movies because he didn't he's have like a, a big... mailman. He's just like yeah, angry. he's this angry mailman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Turbo Man is the toy. Turbo Man, which, like, isn't even a real thing. No, but it looks kind of like Iron Man. It's yeah, like it looks like Iron Man or, like, he kind of fights guys. It's kind of like Power, Power Rangers. Power Rangers, yeah, for sure. Because it was definitely it definitely came out in, like, the Power Rangers hype. Yeah, I think it was mid-90s or so, <laughs> um, late 90s. But, uh, well, let's so, not yeah. forget the hero of the film, Jake Lloyd. <laughs> oh, <laughs> For when you bring up to your uh, prequel podcast. Oh, yeah. Which, yeah, I'll get into that in the uh, the Film Tweakers prequel podcast, but, like, that guy, that kid, poor kid, he got made fun of so much after pretty Phantom bad. Menace. But, like, he he's a kid. Like, he's in this, and it's just, like, what else do you expect? Like, not every kid is going to be, like, Oscar-worthy. No, I think he was actually better in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> <laughs> he was not bad. I'm trying to think of the quote, the Turbo Man quote. It's about lying and friendship. Did you see that as a kid? Or I did, yeah. Um, but I revisited it more in my adulthood. I saw it, it was like at Walgreens for really cheap, and I bought it. And now I watch it every every year. Oh, yeah. And like you said, Simbab, it's so weird because after that movie, I'm like, this guy's hilarious. And I saw yeah. some of his stand-up. But then he didn't really have a big movie career after that. No. <laughs> so it's just like, ah, oh, uh, Simbad, who? The mailman in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> you know. <laughs> The mailman and jingle all the way. Always keep your promises if you want to keep your friends. <laughs> That's like the main theme of the movie. Yeah. 
because yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character he promises to do all this stuff, but he always forgets or work gets in the way. And so. like Phil Hartman's trying to like bone his wife. Oh Rita God. Wilson. Phil Hartman's hilarious in that movie. I totally Phil forgot Hartman. about Phil Hartman. I know. Rest in peace. Because it was like he did that in like Small Soldiers, like right in a row, and mm-hmm. then I think he died like a year after Oof. that. But like. That was so weird. It's like another creepy <laughs> Christmas movie it's thing. Like where it's like a fight with a reindeer. <laughs> yeah, like he's just openly coming on to his wife. And it's not like Arnold and the wife are like getting divorced. No, but they are fighting. They're fighting, but that doesn't mean like, well, yeah. <laughs> let me just move on yeah. in. It's no big deal. <laughs> it's cool because our, our sons are friends. Like, no. But, yeah, anyway... Uh, any other <laughs> scenes from that you love with Arnold? There's that one weird scene with like all the Santas in the warehouse, and I feel with like that Jim was, Belushi. Is that who's in it? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I feel like that scene may have been like cut initially or something. I don't know why I'm remembering it that way, or or it's like a bonus feature on the DVD. I could be making that up. Yeah, like it's yeah. I think it's Jim Belushi, and then I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, but the Big Show, he was like the seven foot Santa okay. that came in and like beat the crap out of everyone. Oh man! What other Christmas movies are some of your favorites that you'd like to bring up well, uh, before we get into the Die Hard discussion? Yes. <laughs> well, on your list, you mean you have two favorites, which is Home Alone and Elf. Oh, how could I almost forget Home Alone? Yeah, Home Alone is, I I, I think just the best of them all. Oh yeah. And even Home Alone Two is good. Yeah, Home Alone 2 is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, That one I saw later, Mm -hmm. but the first one, same with, like, Jingle All the Way. Like, I saw it on VHS so many times, Mm -hmm. even when it wasn't Christmas time. Like, because it's just more slapstick humor with uh, Daniel Stern, I think his name is, and uh, Joe Pesci, Pesci, which he goes from, like, Goodfellas. To this, he's got the greatest. Uh, I was I just watched Lethal Weapon two the other day, and he's mm-hmm. the best part of that movie. He's so funny. Yeah, and like it's you could tell like he really wanted to swear because mm-hmm. he's like <laughs> <laughs> it was because there's probably a lot of takes with Christopher Columbus. It's like Joe Pesci, this is a kids movie. <laughs> Joe, you can't say fuck when the kid hits you with a paint can. <laughs> It's like, well, it fucking hurts. Oh, yeah. um, and it's like Catherine O'Hara, who's one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, it's another kind of, like, dark, I mean, premise. The parents just forget this kid. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like... Well, he was kind of being a little bitch at the beginning. Oh, he was. But one thing, I think the biggest villain of the whole movie, not even the robbers... Oh, is Uncle the, Frank. The, the, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you knew exactly... I knew what you were saying. Uncle Frank. Like... But I feel like we all had, like, a family member like that who just, like, look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> I'm like, that is scarring. <laughs> like, that kid's going to be having flashbacks to that when he's an adult. Just oh. like, Uncle Frank called me a little jerk just because I spilled some pizza and soda. Like, uh, it's not. <laughs> uh, from God. a big family. I'm an only child, so I, didn't, I never had to deal with that either. Yeah, like, luckily my family's a little bit smaller, too. But that's just so, <laughs> it was so weird. Like, how... It's not even his kid. Like, it'd be different if it was, like, his dad. Mm -hmm. But his uncle just comes up, look what you did, you little jerk. I was like, Christ. (laughs) It's not that big of a deal. They were all mean to him. Was it the second one that they, like, put the lights behind his ears in the Christmas pageant? I think that's the second one. I think that's the second one, yeah. yeah. Uh, And wasn't it to make him look... uh, Because his, like, ears glow because he kept kind of big ears. Oh, yeah, and then, like, he, like, pushed someone, and yeah. then, it, then like, everyone's like, oh, it's his fault. It's yeah, like, he got in trouble for stuff that, like, he, like, it was Buzz's fault. God, but, fucking Buzz. And Big Pete was one of the, was was one of the cousins? Or maybe he was a sibling. Big Pete from Pete and Pete. I don't. You know Pete and Pete? Pete and Pete. You don't know Pete and Pete? <laughs> what? I don't know Pete and Pete. I think one thing that I love most about Home Alone is it goes from being funny to actually being very emotional. Oh, yeah. Like, I've probably cried at that ending sometimes, you know, when he comes down. And at first he thinks they'll be there. Mm -hmm. And then there's no one there. And he's kind of sad. And then just, Kevin, you know. (laughs) 
so uh, good. Like, Waterworks. Yeah. Oh, Catherine O'Hare. She's just a oh. top-notch lady. John Candy's in the movie. Yes. <laughs> just the, as a random guy that gives her a ride. The bus. Like, what are they? Like a polka band? No. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah, something they're like polka. That. Yeah. Doesn't he play, like, piccolo or something? Something. Like, it was very random. I haven't watched that in a couple years because somebody borrowed it. So, it's funny. My roommate and I each have a copy of Home Alone 2, <laughs> but there's no Home Alone copies in this house. Just <laughs> multiple copies of the sequel. Because <laughs> you... Uh, uh, did she lend it out too, or she? I, no, I think she just really likes the second one. <laughs> <laughs> she only she owns Ghostbusters two and not the first one. Also, <laughs> that's very weird. Does she only own the Star Wars prequels? Uh, she had never seen Star Wars until she lived with me. So. Oh, okay. You had to educate her. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Home Alone. I think is one of the best of all time, Christmas wise, because like it's just emotional. It is hilarious and. So many great actors involved. Macaulay Culkin at the height of his powers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of Christmas movies. They're so they're so great. Do you have a favorite like classic, classic, like old? Hmm. That's the thing is like, there's a lot of classics. I mean, uh, they don't. My parents always love to watch It's a Wonderful Life, mm-hmm. but like, I don't know. A lot of these ones are kind of like my classics, just because they typically steered away from older movies, like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boring. <laughs> it's all right, you know, but even the the one that was remade later with Richard Attenberg, like, it's okay. Yeah. But um, do you have some classics? The only classic that I that I try to watch every year, although I recently discovered it as an adult, I didn't watch it as a kid, was White is White Christmas. Okay. White Christmas is so good. Uh, I love musicals, so okay. it's got that going for it. <laughs> but even just there are some dance numbers that are so mind-blowingly good, and they don't do that anymore. Like there are musicals nowadays, but they don't really put any effort into like the dancing or anything. And I mean Bing Crosby and like all this, all the singing. It's just it's a really good classic. Also yeah. on Netflix, <laughs> if you haven't seen it. <laughs> this podcast is advertised by Netflix. <laughs> no, I wish, I wish, I would, I would just talk the shit up uh, mm-hmm. about Netflix. But no, interesting. I, uh, I've i heard of it, obviously, but mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that one. And you mentioned before you like uh, Love Actually. Is that- yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, oh, what a girl thing to say, but it's really good. It's, it's, I think it's a romantic classic, but I actually prefer The Family Stone, which... Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> is, just what a great cast. That's one that the first time I saw it, I didn't like it, and then I watched it again, and I've seen that movie a hundred times. Yeah, like it's just sweet. I think the reason I kind of steered away from Family Stone and a lot of like kind of romantic comedies is because it's weird being like a film major that like my parents, not that they have awful taste in movies, but they just have total opposite taste. Mm-hmm. And like the one thing my mom just will always watch is a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. And so growing up really only watching those, it's like I know the formula. Yeah. And it just kind of like got tiresome. And like uh, Family Stone, it was also the movie that she she bought twice. <laughs> That's such a mom thing to do. <laughs> like she, uh, I think she had bought it, put it somewhere, forgot she owned it, and then it was like, oh, it's on sale, and bought another mm-hmm. one. And so the one year I did inventory just to show her how many times she bought duplicates. And like the one was still like unopened. I'm like, you probably can't return it. It's probably been five years. But like, why is why do we have Family Stone twice? Like, it's not like Die Hard or you know a classic movie. It's Family Stone, but it's underrated. <laughs> it's yeah. I mean, yeah. It's ri- I think it's written really well, and all the performances. It's got so many famous people in it. Don't like the brothers yeah. end up dating different. <laughs> yeah, they like maybe they basically swap. Maybe girlfriend. that's what I thought that was weird. I was just like, I would never swap girls with my brother. Like, yeah, well, it's only like one, like one of the, like, Sarah Jessica Parker is dating Delma Maroney, and then by the end, she's with Luke Wilson. Okay. And then but her sister is Claire Danes. Spoiler alert, guys. I just spoiled <laughs> the whole movie. But she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> maybe take this out. Um, and then, yeah, Claire Danes ends up with Delma Maroney. So yeah, so it is a it is yeah. a swap. But like, but Luke Wilson wasn't dating Claire Danes. Yeah, oh yeah, but I mean, but still, it's a pair of brothers and sisters. Yeah, it's still very odd. Like, I, like what do the parents say? Like, what's the next Christmas like? Well, the next <laughs> Christmas is a little sad because one of them dies. Uh, wait, the, the, is it the dad? And, well, I don't want to say. You can say it's it's been out like what ten years. Yeah, you're right. Eleven, I think. <laughs> Diane Keaton dies. Oh, that's yeah. right. Okay, I think I remember. We don't see her die, but. 
By yeah. the time next Christmas comes around, she dies. But yeah, but still, like, I guess I'm thinking about the Christmases moving forward. Like, hey, remember when we were, uh... You know, they cut to it, and they all, like, they make it seem like everyone's really happy with the situation. <laughs> You know, it could be weirder, I guess. It could be weirder. I don't know. They're all happy now, so. Yeah, I mean, Except they're still a little sad because the mom died. Yeah, but uh, it's just very, I don't know. Explaining it, and this is making it sound really bad. <laughs> no, I swear, if you have But no, like, that's it, what I do with movies, yeah. is like, like, you said you're an only child, or you have... Yeah, I'm an only Okay, child. so maybe it's because, like, I have a brother, I'm like, and, like, he has a fiancé, I have a wife, it's like, I would never think about, like, somewhere down the line with all of our girlfriends, like, switching. Like, yeah. It's very I mean, it's not like they all sat down and was like, okay, you know what, I think you two would be better for you. It's a little more organic than that. <laughs> it is, but it's just, think about that, it's very okay it's like it's some sort of weird like maybe it's because like too much i've watched too much game of thrones with the incest I'm like sure. i'm just like uh what what i don't know sloppy seconds <laughs> you don't want that with a sibling uh, like because so, uh eskimo brothers a whole new meaning oh god <laughs> um okay so <laughs> we'll move on from family stone uh elf is another uh, another great one. That's one that you can't not watch. Yeah, I uh, I actually saw that one a little bit later. I think that was one I kind of avoided it because people hyped it so mm-hmm. much. Worth the hype. Yeah, and then I watched it. I was like, okay, that's funny. Yeah, like it's it's not as like raunchy as other Will Ferrell stuff, mm-hmm. but it's it is funny. Um, it's weird um, going back now that like. I've seen uh, a good amount of New Girl mm-hmm. with Zoe Deschanel, and then like seeing her here, like blonde, and then like a love interest of like Will Ferrell. I'm like, it is weird to see her like <laughs> blonde and back in the day. I didn't think that was the same person. Yeah, <laughs> I remember I got I got into Zoe um, when when she started like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Like like 2003 2004 was like her time. But even though Elf and that movie were only a year apart, it, she does seem like a different person. Like, yeah, the blonde hair didn't really work out. Yeah. <laughs> I think she was in an episode of Frasier when she was blonde. So, yeah, so it was like a different career. And, I mean, Peter Dinklage. Yeah. <laughs> that one scene. Mm-hmm. It's fun to look back on, on his career, too. Yeah. Um, Amy Sedaris. I mean. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, any others? Uh, and we, we may, uh, before we move on to the Die Hard discussion, because I think this will this will be a... Not a heated debate, but it, sure. I'm very interested. I think it's going to be a big discussion. Yeah. Any other Christmas ones? Um, a, a big one is A Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. That's a... Uh, yeah. I think that's one I haven't seen in a while, but uh, maybe I was always impartial to Muppet Treasure Island. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Muppet Treasure Island's great, but A Muppet Christmas Carol, I mean, it's it's a classic. <laughs> It's it's got great songs and it's got the Muppets, Michael Caine. I mean, really, what else can you want? Michael Caine. Yes, great impression. <laughs> that's all. That's I can say him saying his name. <laughs> oh, you know what? One I wanted to bring up because you mentioned that there hasn't really been any like good good Christmas movies lately, and a, a one that I think is really underrated is Arthur Christmas, hmm. which is a cartoon about like an elf. Who, no, I'm sorry. It's a cartoon about Santa's son who, like, really loves Christmas, and his older brother is, like, in line to be the next Santa, but he's very, like... Their last name is Christmas? I don't, you know, I don't know if that's their last name. But um, the older brother is, like, very militant and, like, wants to, like, is more interested in, like, how we get the presents there faster and everything, and Arthur, like, just wants to bring joy to children. But it's really cute and funny. And, Interesting. I've yeah, never heard of that one. It's really sweet. It's uh, maybe, like, 2013, 2012. The animation, yeah. you said? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's hmm. a fun one. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that one's on Netflix. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she 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 knows like all the movies that are on Netflix. Just like because you are, I'm, I'm guessing you're always like recommending things to people, and sure. you're like, it's on Netflix. Yeah, and you're gonna see it. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, one I'm actually currently still in the middle of. I haven't finished yet. I was watching it on HBO just last night. Uh, Bad Santa. Yeah. Have you seen that one? Is that uh, I haven't seen Bad Santa since it was out in theaters. And w- what year was that? 2003? Three, yeah. Okay, so I, I would have been 13. You were, so. too dis- you were too distracted by Elf. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so I remember I saw it with my stepdad and it was just like really raunchy and awkward to watch with him <laughs> and I just haven't seen it since. <laughs> you were kind of scarred? Yeah, it was weird. Yeah. Uh, I could see that. I mean, I'm only like I think 20 minutes in, and he's already like puked and pissed himself, and I'm yeah. just like, I'm like, okay, this is. Uh... Have we heard anything? We the collective we is bad Santa two any good? 
I think that's an indication. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure it came out within, like, the last few weeks. Yeah, it's um, it's just came out. Like, I'm curious of what the Rotten Tomatoes score is. Yeah. 23%. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those, I'm not a fan of when they spend, like, over a decade to have the sequel. It dep- if, if you're going to do that, it has to be a movie that, like, is really good. Yeah. That you're excited. That or somehow it fits into the story. Yeah. The time jump. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, it felt to me that, like, a studio head was looking around for old sequel ideas. Yeah. And, like, he just has a pile of them, and he's just looking through, and someone's just like, what about Bad Santa 2? He's like... All right. Yeah, the studio was like, "Oh, we don't have a Christmas movie coming out this year. Billy Bob's not doing anything." <laughs> yeah, Billy Bob's, uh, he's not up for Love Actually too. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I forgot he was. I always forget he's the president. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. He's very. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I uh, Love Actually. That's one that like I'll admit it was better than I expected. Yeah. But there was like a couple things I wish that they like. I feel like they could have removed like maybe one or two of the storylines, which they did. It was much longer. There were there were storylines that they've wait. I've, there were oh yeah, I've I've watched the commentary a few times. Oh wow. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a whole um, there was um, actually a story about a lesbian couple, which is kind of a bummer that they cut out because yeah. it would have been nice to have. Um, but like one had cancer, and so maybe like so I think they were just trying to get rid of some of the drama. See, my uh, it's funny you say that because actually with the Andrew Lincoln, uh, Keir Knightley, and Chi will tell. EG4, mm-hmm. um, their storyline... You can say his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I've heard it on the Marvel Movie News podcast so many times yeah. when they talk about Doctor Strange. But <laughs> Jamie Jirak. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I got it. Okay. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> that uh, So, like, the whole movie they're talking about, like, why don't you like her? Why don't mm-hmm. you like her? You know, I'm married to her. You kind of want to like her. And then, like, you reveal, oh, he's in love with her. It's like... What if, it wouldn't have been better if he was actually in love with his friend. Well, I think that they, that was like they wanted you to think that's where it was going, and then so like it was kind of like a twist, but like a less interesting twist. Um, I'd, maybe if they would have made you think it was going to be Keira Knightley and end up being the friend, but um, but I remember, but they do really set it up to make you think he's in love with his best friend. Yeah. So it's still a twist. Yeah, I think that was just one of those, you know, maybe if the movie had come out, like, more recently, maybe mm-hmm. that's something they would have done. But that was one thing because it was, like, Andrew Lincoln, he's okay in that, but, like, it's just very, his his is one of the, the lesser stories that's, like, very, gets very minimal time compared mm-hmm. to some of the others. So I was like, oh, wouldn't it have been nice to be, like, go the route of, he? oh, he's in love with his best friend's girl. It's like, no, he's in love with his best friend who's a man. And, like, everyone saw the Keira Knightley thing, but it's a, they veered the other way. But I do, like, <coughs> excuse me, that, um, that, like, he doesn't, actually like take your net like I, I, because that's probably like the most famous scene is when he comes in with the with the cardboard whatever the signs yeah like, to me you are perfect or whatever so i, I like the way they took it because it could have been like he could have tried to steal her she could have decided to leave her husband yeah um, much like phil hartman and Jingle yeah, right. way. <laughs> but if but if he had been in love with his best friend i feel like they, the two of them that they would have had to end up together mm-hmm. so yeah yeah, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, that is one of the more known scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Liam Neeson's pretty good in that. I, yeah, uh, I enjoy but him. it actually was hard to watch after Natasha Richardson died. Yeah. Because watching him like mourn his wife now that his wife had passed away is actually really depressing. Yeah. Um, and it's also, uh, speaking of, uh, it's hard watching that with like Alan Rickman um, uh, having after he passed this year. Yeah. Um, you know, that would be a great segue into uh, that's what, <laughs> I think he saw where I was going. Um, segue into the Die Hard discussion. Um, I wish I had a cool sound bite for that. <laughs> so, big thing that's kind of been... I've seen debated on various other geeky like shows, podcasts, like, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Mm-hmm. I say it is. Because, like, I mean, like, really what constitutes a Christmas movie? I mean, my understanding is it kind of takes place during Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, And, you know, like, there's family involved and, like, maybe a happy ending. And Die Hard is all that. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) Like, it's it's not as very, you know, like, worried about Santa or, like, that kind of stuff. But, like... It's it's one of those things. It's like like I said. What, what what do you consider a Christmas movie? Right. And I so so here's the thing. I I don't have a 
an exact stance on this argument because um, I'll watch Die Hard anytime. But I also You're Switzerland on exactly. This. Well, I, I have arguments for both sides because well, when I watch Die Hard every Valentine's Day, um, this coming Valentine's Day will be the ninth year in a row that my friends and I get together and watch Die Hard on Valentine's Day. And people are like, "But it's a Christmas movie." Like, no, it is an, a film that is amazing and transcends holidays. It can be <laughs> it can be watched at any time. And I would definitely say yes, it's a Christmas movie. But unlike all the other movies we talked about, it can be watched at any time of the year. Yeah. And but also here's my number one argument for why it's not a Christmas movie. Okay. Is Lethal Weapon, do you consider that a Christmas movie? Cuz mm. it's the same kind of thing and it takes place at Christmas time. Yeah. But that's I mean maybe it's cuz like that that's Shane Black, the yeah. writer. He always puts his movies like uh kind of during Christmas. Sure. So it's like I could see that, but um maybe it's because Die Hard's a movie that takes place all over the course of one night mm-hmm. and it is is a it is Christmas Eve, right? Yeah, that's right cuz the <laughs> I was the principal from Breakfast Club <laughs> when he's the one cop it's like you're going to turn off the power it's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um maybe it's cuz of that. I've always thought like That's a fair argument that the fact that it takes place all in the one day. But I, but I still argue. I mean, if we're considering Die Hard a Christmas movie, then we should also consider Lethal Weapon a Christmas movie. Yeah. Well, just because I want Die Hard to be considered a Christmas movie, I would, I would, <laughs> I would take Lethal Weapon. There you go. But yeah, I'd have to rewatch Lethal Weapon and see like maybe how much takes place during Christmas. But it also, I think Die Hard kind of has the. Uh, I don't think it's snowing at the end, but it's kind of like there's like an explosion. So yeah. there's like debris that's kind of acting as snow. <laughs> and then like the, the like, he, like he's kissing his wife and it's a happy ending. And then like the Christmas music comes <laughs> on and it, as he drives away in the limo. And I don't know, like maybe it's just like... The fact that it's like the movie kicks off with Christmas and Hollis is a pretty, I mean... I think that's a pretty Christmassy thing to do. Yeah. I mean, it's during a Christmas party. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I definitely don't want to say that it's not a Christmas movie. Yeah. But I also don't want to pigeonhole it as a Christmas movie. Yeah, I understand. So, listeners, I want to hear what you guys think. Is it a Christmas movie? Because, like, uh, I understand both arguments. I'm just biased because you said it's, like, in your top five yeah, movies of all time. Five. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, it didn't make my top ten. We actually did a podcast where we had to make our top ten. Ooh. Very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think I'd make my 50, top 15 or so. Okay. So it's close. It's mm-hmm. not like I don't like it. Uh, I top 15 is a pretty respectable number. <laughs> I would say anything in my top 100 is a movie that I Oh, have, wow. Oh, you know. God. I I couldn't even. I it just would be hard. That because uh, you'd have to think of pretty much every movie you've ever seen. Yeah. Which, based on like your shelf and like thinking of my shelf at home, like it's a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I could easily get to ten, and then and then I panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Die Hard. I think it's just a classic. And I, my excuse is, I was saying with my wife, I'm like, it takes place on Christmas Eve. It has a happy ending. It's family problems. <laughs> He's I mean, trying to save. Ending, but like a lot of people get shot in the face. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot of red. It's. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me there. Yeah, there. It's a lot of yeah, a lot of red. It uh, sort of ends kind of like it's snowing, but it's, but it's. I think it's explosive mm. debris, but. Well, it's uh, it's like you said, it's it's a nice debate um, that I, I like to have with people. Like, is it a Christmas movie? Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't say it's number one Christmas. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's obviously an action movie. Yeah. But like, I just like to say, oh, yeah, you know, let's put on my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. Yeah. <laughs> people are like, wait, what? <laughs> Speaking of Shane Black movie, it, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is that Christmas time? I think that's another one. It's like around mm-hmm. Christmas time. If he because that's one thing is he does that for like all of them. Yeah, but uh, but the nice guys wasn't at the end. Like the, there's kind of like a Christmas tree in the background. Like it's oh, okay. it, not as he much. He snuck it in. Yeah, right. like he snuck that one in. Opposed to like maybe people were giving him too much shit, and he was just like, you know. Um, I mean, all of my plays have been take took place at, take took place at Christmas time. So. Yeah, which I. Do uh, do you want to maybe tell like the premises of those? Like I kind of I'm curious what the first two were about. I know you said they were all holiday it, plays. It's funny because the first one I ever wrote, which was two years ago, was called Holiday Party, and it took place at an office Christmas party. And now there's this new movie coming out, Office <laughs> Christmas Party, um, with you know like Kate McKinnon and yeah. stuff. And so a lot of people have been like, "Oh, you got to sue. That was your idea." I was like, "You know, is it the most original idea?" Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm actually going to see it. The, um, this well. By the time this 
podcast airs, I will have seen it. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I, I I think it's good. I'm excited to watch it and yeah. see how it compares to my play. Um, and the second one I wrote was called Holiday Special, which was about the set of a sitcom, um, bef- like gearing up to film their holiday episode. Okay. And then this one, which you saw, Dine Another Holiday, is about families meeting for the first time on Christmas, and one of the families are all spies, secret agents. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I remember I saw when they were posting for Die Another Holiday, it said, like, you're, this is like the third in your trilogy of yeah. holiday movies. I was like, there's two others? Like, you're going to have to send me all three of those scripts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it, that's one thing that's, it's like, what is considered a Christmas movie? Does mm. it just have to take place during Christmas, or does it have to be kind of cheesy, cheerful? Yeah. You know, like when they're like a lot of horror movies that take place at Christmas time. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't even didn't yeah. even think of that. Uh, what's the newer one, Krampus? Krampus which, is that is that good? I never know, saw that one. It's not the best. <laughs> However, I would recommend it because all of the creatures and stuff are all like like hand, like they're all made. They're not CGI. It's all oh. practical effects, which okay. is, which I love. Yeah, I'm not a CGI person. Oh, me um, neither. And so the fact that they actually like built the creatures um, that because like a lot of stuff comes to life it's I think it's worth watching just for that oh, but right. as a whole not the best movie I've ever seen <laughs> is that one on Netflix <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know I don't think so I think it's no, too new yeah I uh, yeah I gotta check that one out now because that, mm. uh, that that intrigues me when movies are actually they put in the effort of yeah. getting effects and not trying to go the cheap route of just oh I'll CGI it yeah because then it just looks bad yeah I, can, um, which I just hate that so yeah. much uh, it's one of the great things about Die Hard. I don't think they really. Well, <laughs> it's not a lot of CGI. Um, yeah, so uh, there's yeah, like you said, horror kind of holiday movies, and but then we have the classics like uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm-hmm. So it's it's kind of. I don't know. It's a. I mean, I think there's one even where like the wrestler Goldberg plays like a killer Santa Claus. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> sounds great. It's kind of a wide range of what's considered a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so yeah, we'll digress. And uh, I would love to hear if anyone wants to comment on any Christmas movies they think we missed. Uh, I think we pretty much covered all the ones you wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, yeah I think I, I hit all mine. Um, because, like, Christmas, like, it is great how, you know, like, it's kind of like the 25 days before Christmas mm-hmm. or whatever. But, like, there's only so many movies you can watch. Like, you don't, <laughs> like, you can't watch, like, oh, it's Christmas. Got to watch, like, 20 of these movies. Like, it's... Yeah, there's some you, you you have to watch every year and then some you can skip a year. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, like, Harry Potter's, like, I know some of them, like, take place during Christmas, mm-hmm. but they're not exactly... Christmas movie. Yeah, the first was like, Happy Christmas, Ron. Happy Christmas, Harry. And that's really the extent of the Christmas time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but, and skip to something else with Juan Battles. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, wh- what would you say? Oh, uh, I can't remember if you said, like, if you had to pick your number one Christmas movie, uh, not counting Die Hard. <laughs> not counting Die Hard. It, it's such a tough call. Um, <laughs> I, I really don't know if I could narrow it down. I can say that. As a kid, it was Muppet Christmas Carol. Okay. And um, I really liked the Santa Claus as a kid, too. We pretty much dabbled in, I think, pretty much all the great Christmas movies. And I think just one other thing I wanted to kind of discuss or bring up, and we don't have to go in-depth on it. Um, I guess to me, it feels like for the last, like, ten years or so, like, there hasn't been, like, a new classic Mm -hmm. Christmas movie. Uh, Like, like Elf... Bad Santa, they're kind of like one of like the more recent. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know you said Family Stone, but like... Yeah, and it's... Arthur Christmas was the one that... Yeah. But, yeah, not, nothing that, like, like you, they play on TBS all day. Yeah. Like, like Office Christmas Party coming out, mm-hmm. like, that looks like just like a regular party comedy, but yeah. then they're doing Christmas Party. So, like, I, I mean, I'm hoping it's funny. They have a lot of funny people in mm-hmm. it. Kate McKinnon, T.J. Miller, Jason Bateman. So many funny people. But, like, you see something like that and you're like, yeah, that's not going to be a 24-hour no. <laughs> thing on TBS. Or it's not going to be like, yeah, let's watch Home Alone, Grinch, you know, and Office Christmas Party. Yeah, doesn't, probably not. But hopefully this is better than The Night Before which was like the oh, Seth Rogen. Yeah. yeah. That movie was really disappointing. It was like, there were some parts that were funnier than I thought. Like um, Michael Shannon's character, the drug <laughs> God, dealer. I love Michael Shannon. Um, Mr. Green or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, that was kind of funny, but it was just, yeah, it, it felt like 
opposed to just doing like a Christmas comedy, they're just doing a comedy mm-hmm. and oh, let's put Christmas sweaters on them and that just makes it a Christmas comedy. Yeah. And I feel like you need a little bit more involved in that. Mm-hmm. But that's just me. Maybe we're being a Christmas uh, movie snob. Yeah. I don't know. That's- uh, but yeah, I wasn't sure what you thought. Like, if there's any others, like, like Ryan Reynolds had uh, that one, Just Friends, with. Did that take place at Christmas time? Yeah, like, because he he comes home for Christmas to see. Yeah, it's Amy uh, Smart. Isn't Amy it? Smart. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So one of the uh, the last segments we do here on the podcast is I Hate People, where we get to just vent for a second about uh, either a certain person or a certain group of people and that we just can't stand. So Jamie, you have yourself an I Hate People. Yeah, um, and I'm just going to change it from what I was saying before. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, because, again, I like, I'm like they're on a Christmas theme. So in the spirit of Christmas, <laughs> the people that I hate are people that put their candy wrapper back in the candy bowl. <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can see. I, I do that. <laughs> so, uh, it's not a trash can. It's where the candy goes. I think it's just because I'm just like, sometimes I'm somewhere where I don't know where a trash can Put is. Put it in your pocket. <laughs> it doesn't go in the candy bowl. It's not a trash bowl. But it's kind of like a, not victim this kind, but it's kind of like a, it's one of the only times you can like get away with something where sure. you're just like, well. But I'm the victim because I have to throw the candy wrappers away. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes my beautiful candy display look trash. So now if we're ever at a party and you see that, you just be like, fucking Brandon! <laughs> Where is he? God damn it! And I'm just like, ugh, I swear. <laughs> I also always have candy bowls out. I just keep some in my pocket as like a decoy. <laughs> just like, what? No. That's, see, that's me. But, uh, yeah, I can understand how that can be frustrating. Ooh, and I hate people Christmas related. So, one thing that I can't stand is like, with, you know, everyone, it's so much about, like, everyone loves to give gifts for each other, is that some people, like, feel so bad if, like, they spent more on something than others, and, like, my thing is, like, uh, and then, like, they feel bad if, like, say, I spent more or whatever. I'm just, like, to me, like, it's not about no. how much you spent. Mm-hmm. Like, so often, like, my wife, like, for gifts, uh, sometimes it's the ones that she spent the least on because she, like, made me something yeah. or whatever that are the better ones. And so, like, when people, then they start getting into, like, families want to, like, look, we're setting a dollar limit and it's going to be this and, you know, people are getting these people. I'm like, God, why is Christmas becoming so, such, like, a hassle? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, m- I miss it being just a kid. It was like, well, everyone's just going to give me a gift. Yep. But, that's, like, that's pretty much still what I got going on. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's no one I really have to get a gift for. So. Yeah. And, like, but then it's, like, that weird thing where it's, like, like, example. Like, uh, it's a guy just showed up, like, oh, here, Jamie, I got you a gift. <laughs> and then you're just, like, oh, I, I, I didn't get you anything. I was, like, I'm not going to be, like, upset. Yeah. No, that's, that, that, like, I've been in the position where if someone gives you something, you don't have, like, oh, shit. And then you just be, like, oh, I have your gift, but I just don't have it on me. Yeah. That's what you have to say. <laughs> well, yeah. You're just, like, oh, Amazon, they're really slow. Yeah. Uh, I don't have Prime. You know? <laughs> Um, but yeah, like it's become this weird thing and maybe it's just like being an adult now that like, you know, you only spend so much and this and this. I'm like, God, like, why is it like money shouldn't be like, obviously, like if you buy someone like a TV, mm-hmm. but like, you know, oh, if you spent $20 and you know, I spent 10, you mm-hmm. know, like, are we really no. going to make you can it like thing? Google how much it costs? Yeah. That's the other thing. My, uh, <laughs> my wife brought up cause my family's trying to set like a, we're going to do like a secret Santa thing. And mm-hmm. like, we're gonna, I think we did the limit was like $50. And then, so like me and my dad were like, well, if you spend like 40, do you need to buy something else? That's 10 to get it. <laughs> and my wife's like, what do you, what do you got a price gun? <laughs> 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 like you're going to check, like they spent forty eight ninety five, and you know, there's still like a dollar. They could have got me some gum, <laughs> even it up. Yeah. But, like, uh, I, I ordered something for my roommate the other day just cause I saw it and I was like, Oh, she has to have this. And so I told her, I'm like, I got you something, but it cost me $8. So don't think you have to like return it. Like, you were like the favor. I literally just, it was $8. So yeah. don't worry. And yeah, the other thing too is like when, uh, th- th- it's just become this whole thing. Like, I feel like people get so stressed out about it. Like this is supposed to be a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I understand like money's tight cause you're spending for gifts and stuff, but like, you know, this shouldn't be so stressful that it's ruining the holidays. Yeah. So everyone out there just doesn't matter the price. Be chill. Yeah. <laughs> be chill. <laughs> be chill. Get over it. Cause you know, in a month it's going to be January and you're going to be, you know, making all the resolutions that you're going to lose weight, you know? 
I mean, I do it every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even, like, halfway through the year, I'm like, all right, resolution. It's time. July 4th resolution. Um, But, yeah, so what I like to always do after not hate people is to take a nice breathe in. A nice breathe out. (sighs) Ah, fuck people. That uh, Mm, feels good. Yeah. Feels good. Hey, remember, always keep your promises if you want to keep your (laughs) promises. Uh... Uh, Jirak. <laughs> Jirak. Uh, well, Jamie, it's been awesome having you on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so uh, please plug uh, plug your play and uh, if people could find you on Twitter and all that stuff. Yeah, my Twitter handle is Jamie Cinematics. And uh, my play is Die Another Holiday, Saturdays at uh, the PH Comedy Theater, uh, where you can get tickets at whatisph.com. Yes, as someone who saw the play, go check it out, guys, especially if you like kind of like goofy, darker comedies like Clue or like maybe like Noises Off, like go go see it. It's quite farcical and quite fun. Um, you can find me on Twitter at The Pros, P-R-O-Z-E, and um, you can find uh, this Entertainment Buffet on Twitter as all well, also, at Entertain Buffet, and we're also on Facebook, YouTube, EntertainmentBuffet.com. Check us out there as well. We have not one, but two Christmas sketches coming out, so stay tuned for those. One actually, coincidentally, is called Office, or it's just called Christmas Party, not Office Christmas Party. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, we may be sued. Um, and another one called Christmas Present. Uh, so, yeah, please stay tuned for those. Please rate, review, subscribe on iTunes, all that stuff. Share, comment, all that jazz. It just helps get the podcast out to more people. And again, Jamie, it was fun having you on. We'll have to have you on again because yeah, uh, people won't know, but we paused the podcast and talked about movies for like yeah. 20 minutes. <laughs> most of the most of the interesting <laughs> stuff we talked about was off. <laughs> we just like, we were looking at her movie shelf and we are just like, ah, this movie, this movie, this movie. My experience with this movie. So yeah, we'll definitely have to have you on again and yeah, maybe we'll absolutely. do like a, a ranking of a genre of movies or I something. We can just sounds talk great. about Tarantino. I know you're a Tarantino <laughs> oh, fan. Yeah, I, that sounds amazing. Ha <laughs>